impetus for the University of Queensland embarking on simulation in higher education was originally around the limitations in the availability of clinical placements for our final year physiotherapy students. So there was a period of time where there were not enough placements for the number of students that we had. Therefore, we had to be creative with how we could replicate or mimic or in fact simulate those clinical experiences. And we were able to do that here on campus by simulation. And that really drove the creation of our UQ simulation physiotherapy program. Uh, and we've been continuing that program even though the clinical placement numbers then rose subsequent to that um, crisis. We saw the value in simulation and indeed we believed that we needed to continue offering that simulation experience to students as form of preparation for those students prior to entering the clinical setting. I see firsthand every day in our classroom and in our simulation clinic the merits of simulation. So that is seeing students being able to integrate and consolidate their vast knowledge and theoretical knowledge that they've covered across their years of being a physiotherapy student and being able to apply that and to transition into becoming a physiotherapist or a future physiotherapist. Um, so to me that's so rewarding seeing those benefits and the value of simulation and being able to see students mature from being otherwise quite nervous about entering a clinical setting, whether it's a hospital or a private practice or a rehabilitation setting. Uh, and then through simulation, being able to master those skills and to feel much more confident and indeed we see the competence improving um, and therefore students being more practice ready at the end of the simulation experiences. We go to great lengths to simulate authentically what the real clinical setting will be like. So there's a range of measures that we employ, right from developing the case, including a detailed script for the actor who will play the standardised patient, ensuring that we train the standardised patient so that they are portraying authentically and consistently the case that is required for that assessment, ensuring that the examiner or the assessor is trained to ensure again that the case is a consistent case and that the experience of the student or learner is consistent and that the expectations are clear. We ensure that the setting of our simulation ward is consistent so that at each of the six bays that we have in our simulation ward, the setup is identical, right down to the minutia of which side the IV pole is of the patient, to which side the attachments are, the presentation of the bedside table with the required items for the case that the student will need to access. So all of that detail is right under the microscope so that we ensure the authenticity and the realism of the presentation of the case. So our training of the actors or standardised patients includes training around the presentation. So this would be using things like photographs of the real patient with that particular procedure, surgical procedure, medical condition, along with videos of how that patient presents with the key points broken down around why that presentation is critical, whether it's that there's a limitation in the range of movement that the patient should portray, whether it's pain around an acute surgical um, site, for example. So those things are highlighted through videos, photographs, um, the script, and then coming together with the other patients or actors who are portraying those patients to ensure that we're training all of those actors to portray that same presentation. So what are you thinking is an appropriate treatment technique for Judith? So we're thinking a supported cough. Of course we can't have the patients actually have coarse crackles in the right middle lobe if they have a pneumonia, but one of the ways that we would work around that uh, would be to provide the student with a summary of some of those key points that are relevant to the case 
that may not have been able to be portrayed authentically by the actor in the bed, such as auscultation findings. Um, so that allows us for the students again to suspend disbelief uh, and to be able to add the, that layer of authenticity um, to the patient who they see in front of them. Yeah. Yep, that's great. And then as she's coughing, you can increase that support and that should help minimise the pain. In my experience, the simulation environment is so real. When people enter our simulation ward, for example, they will all say, this feels just like a real hospital. Everything from the bedside to the hand hygiene station to the nurse's station, everything has been set up to replicate or mimic, simulate the real clinical practice. So yes, it's so real. there's so much rigour related to using simulation as an assessment and this is around the control of what we have as the examiner pedagogically designing that assessment to ensure we are capturing the key competencies in that controlled environment. So this is in contrast to the actual clinical setting whereby we have a minimal level of control around the incidental things that might happen to and with the patient during that assessment time. So this could be something as simple as the patient no longer being available in the actual clinical setting at the time of the assessment. Whereas in simulation, we can ensure that the um, appropriate patient, the appropriate level of the complexity of that case, um, the key requirements around competencies are all able to be available to us at the required time and for the required length of time. So in my experience and my perspective, I would advocate for using simulation as an even more authentic assessment modality compared with what we're able to have access to uh, reliably in the real clinical setting. Into the future I see an extension of simulation using things like virtual reality, augmented reality to continue to really refine the experience and to bringing the clinical setting into the classroom so that the learner is able to experience that clinical environment in the safety of a simulated setting. So I see the future of simulation in physiotherapy as being very bright. I see that we've had an explosion in simulation and that we're really maturing as a profession to embedding and adopting and embracing simulation as a training modality and also as an assessment approach. Mm -hmm.